Chairman to sign one tax abatement in the amount of 88.58 for a trailer that was uh, moved to Shawnee County and registered in Shawnee County. I so move. I'll second. Moved by Thompson, seconded by Knight. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 <coughs> Passes. That concludes our miscellaneous motions for the day. Uh, River City will be here. No, there, there he is. <laughs> Sorry, no way. You're, no, you're not. It's 901. You're fine. <laughs> we're just we're just fast. Today. Today. Yeah. Yeah, traffic was a little quick. Kind of got cold, didn't it? A little bit. I'm not going to get rid of my jacket. That's not going to happen until later this week. <laughs> next week. Next week. Really? It's supposed to stick around that long? Well, colder. Off and on. Oh, I was hoping not. <laughs> yeah, we got to shut down four concrete storm in the state. Really? Thirty five hours. Thank you. <clears throat> River City will start the 905. Jail update, weekly jail update. You're up, sir. Perfect. Quick update. Uh, we had a pour last, we had footing pour last Friday. Uh, started on this north side of the footings. They should be wrapping those up and hitting some elevator pits. That rain put a little damper on the elevator pits last week. We had a nice little puddle, but. Uh, Working on, got the waterproofing on the elevator pits, going to start working on four of those and finishing out on the north footings. And the plumbers will be starting on their uh, plumbing underground this week. They're going to be running, uh, they'll be on this east side starting out. And then uh, we got the electricians coming in. Uh, we might get them next week, depending on how the plumbing goes, if not the following. Working our underground and looking for a slab pour. We got our first slab four is tentatively scheduled. Where are we at? Uh, the first one will be right? south half before 422 is our first scheduled slab four for now. Or tentative data. When? Uh, 422, April 22nd. April 22nd. Okay. The south half has got. We broke the slabs in the south half, north half, and then the safe room and sally port will be separate. But uh, the main building pad will be two pours, and the south half's got the majority of our plumbing and electric underground with the kitchen on the south half and our electrical room. So it'll take a little bit of time to get there, but once we get there, we'll hopefully start rolling. Uh, you mentioned this slab will be started April 22nd. Not six weeks what? It'll take that long to roll all the equipment out. Hopefully we can improve on it, uh, but that's our currently our tentative date uh, with what we do have for the underground. And we're gonna we got our anchor bolts rolling um, and steel. I'll be following there after that. <coughs> we got we'll have our masons coming in for that divider wall first after both slabs are poured. And then our steel will be following that. How long do you got to let that sit before you start putting something on top of the slab? On just the slab, yeah. like masonry? Yeah. Our concrete breaks have been pretty well. Uh, yeah. 
we'll hit probably three to five days and we'll be what's your concrete breaks been the last one was we've only received seven day breaks and they've all been 70 percent or better at the seven day uh, i think the last one was like 98 percent at the seven day break yeah they've been breaking i think it's a 4,000 psi yes. and they've been breaking it like 3,800 yes days, they only need to make 3,000 right mm -hmm. i'd say so <clears throat> Good. They've been yeah. doing yes very well. Yeah. Hopefully keep that up. Yeah. That's the ones I've seen anywhere, 37, 38. Yes, they've all been I think a 39 would be in there. Yes. This last one I think was right at the 39 or a little over. Yeah. But they've all been well within the seven day range. I think the the lowest one we've had was seventy percent of the, the mix design and they'll take he said he'll usually accept into like 55, 60 percent on the lower end. He's a little concerned, mm -hmm. but uh, and they may take an extra break or do an extra early break. But we've been well within almost that design PSI. You take a sample out of each uh, each load that comes in. Forward. We do the first one. It depends how many yards we're pouring. Yeah. We take one sample within 25 yards. And then after 25 yards, we take an additional sample for every 50 yards. But they usually pull the first one, do the air and uh, the slump test before we back the truck up to the ditch. And they've been, we've been using Call Valley out of Emporia. They've been really well to work with. A lot of uh, a lot of wheels in motion to come together at once. Yeah, it's yeah. starting to get very busy. Yeah. You got this whole list of things <laughs> that have to be done in order to mm -hmm. all into place. Yeah, I think that'd be kind of a job. It's starting to be a lot of people. Uh, Concrete and Limiteds. They've been running eight to about fifteen guys. I think they're getting another wall crew in to run some of the south walls this week. Uh, and then the plumbers and electricians coming on. We'll be 20 or so guys here in the next few weeks. Now, will they form the walls or will they pour, pour them down and sand them up? They've been uh, forming them. They've been forming them. They've actually looked really well. Uh, not used to some of the quality. We, at home, is a little less at times. Yeah. They've been doing really well. We've been very pleased with them. Okay. Good. Good. Yeah. Hopefully everybody else is. Appreciate it. And hopefully everything keeps going in the keeps going the good we can keep good news. Temperatures right above freezing or a little above will be hopefully don't drop too much. Right, right, right. But it's been good good building weather. Can't get a late late winter and early spring like we've had. <laughs> right. Been pretty fortunate. Appreciate it. Thank yes, you, sir. Thank you. Thank you for me. Thank you. Born Tom. On Tom. Thanks. Thank you. You're welcome. How are you? I'm here. Thank you. We've got crosswinds at 9.30. Must have got some checks and vouchers here. I can sign my...
<clears throat> oh, I thought there were two of them. I don't know. I can't remember.
They were hanging together. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. That's not on there, wasn't it?
three or four of those. Good morning, ladies. How are you? Good, how are you? Want your paperwork? Kill a little time before you all showed up. Are you just waiting on us, huh? And then we come in with coffees oh, in our hand. Yeah, I know. I should have left it at the start. so cold. I enjoy well, you're, it. You're, you're here early. We're here okay, good. Oh, my God. Well, once we're kind of ahead of schedule. So. I know. It doesn't happen very often. We get shot 15 minutes late with coffee. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Then we know you stopped off at Starbucks. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't bring some for everybody. Then. Well, that's what I was telling We about. were not kind, sorry. We owe No, only if you're late. If you're on oh, okay, time. okay. Bring your own and you're on time. If you're late, you bring one for everybody. Okay. Well, we're hosting a little coffee and conversation, so we were down there for late. Yeah. See who we can talk to. I'd say it'd be wise to bring you a snack or something when you come here because we're liable to say, we're going into a 20 minute Right. <laughs> <laughs> about the time you get here. So. Don't come hungry. <laughs> Amanda, your office is it up to, on the west side of the 40th state. Uh, one of the new buildings. One of them. Yeah. I dropped by the other day and I caught seeing that. Yeah. Yeah. It's getting I thought that's probably one of your offices or. Getting fixed up. Well, we're ready. If you're ready, okay. we'll call our uh, 930 Crossroads Chief Amanda Cunningham. Well, it's good to see everybody. Good well, morning. Second Monday, coming off of our spring break. Mm -hmm. no and then it's chilly. <laughs> <laughs> and I have uh, Sarah Stockwell with me. She's their CSO as well. If you didn't have call in there. Also a Coffee County resident. <laughs> um, so I'm really just here today to give an update. I'd just like to kind of come through and talk about <coughs> the previous year and uh, how things went for us and what we have to look forward to. Uh, as you may recall, we, uh, by state statute, have to provide an annual report to the commissioners. We typically have an annual meeting uh, where we invite individuals to come and have some guests last year that came. and. Um, but we just kind of take that information and bring it to to the meetings as well because we know everybody can't always make those and want to make sure everybody has the information. So uh, I will just go through that very quickly and then see if you guys have any questions or need that um, I need to talk about. So the biggest thing, um, if we look at page two, is our governing board for last year. So we do not have any current board members from Coffee County. Um, that is looking up. Sarah was a board member prior to becoming CFO, and then Karen Reeves was also one and then moved about the same time. And so we've been struggling to find some individuals to commit to that. And um, recently, Brian Dyer, who's a school social work worker at um, the Burlington School District, has um, come to one meeting and is, is wanting to join. And so he should be a new member here in the next couple months. 
and then also uh, working on another couple of leads trying to get them involved. So if anybody has any other names, it certainly would take those down and try to get a hold of them as well. We can have full representation. Because uh, we do have three potential board seats, we like to at least have one for sure, and, and you know, two is even better so people can travel together and do some of those things. Mm -hmm. but, very important to have representation from the county. Then on page four, it kind of goes into um, our staff and those that have been there for many, many years. I just like to always highlight that because we do have quite a few staff that have been here for multiple years. And then this year, it's really important to talk about uh, because we have had the lowest turnover in about seven years at our agency. And especially when we talk about that in our rural counties, uh, we're, we're glad to see that slowing down. And um, we've had a 24% increase in staff since the year before, and already are seeing an increase this year. So some of it has to do with that certified community behavioral health clinic that we've been talking about for the last couple of years that the state model is changing to um, because it's really pushing us to open new services and provide different sorts of things that will then uh, equate into an increase in services and you need more staff to do those things. So, lots of good uh, stuff when we talk about staff retention. We've also started a new uh, retention plan that we hope is more enticing uh, to people to get them to stay. So we're constantly trying to figure out how to recruit and retain, um, but then also um, rewarding people for staying for longer periods of time, making it hopefully worth, um, worth it to them to stay. Uh, also for those that work in our rural counties, trying to they have a little bit higher pay than those that work in Lyon County. Just again, it's harder to keep people in those rural counties, especially at our clinician level. That unless they live in that county, uh, it becomes difficult to keep them. So, trying to just make sure we're we're keeping people and having more consistency across that board, and we're seeing that work uh, for sure. Um, and then the, the key thing that you guys are probably in, in, in invested in and um, why we have to report to the board of, uh, of the commissioners is the revenue expenses and, and expenses on our budget on page five. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, it, it was a weird year because at the very tail end, we started being a provisional CCBHC in that new model of care. So we moved from fee for service to um, getting a, a per person rate, a PPS rate. And so um, for every person we see on a given day, we get a, a certain amount back. But the nice thing about that is it takes it into a cost basis. So we got to write all of our costs it takes to perform that one service over the number of services we perform. And I have Sarah in the room, and it's weird when she's behind me, so she's probably her better to explain that. That sums it up. <laughs> um, but what it does is allow us to provide uh, services and not have to be so focused on are we going to get paid for that service or not? Because it, by taking into account how much it costs us to perform it, we get a, a more payment, clearly. And so we're doing things that we're not getting paid for, like the Stepping Up Initiative and having a jail liaison and our mobile crisis team that I'll talk about in a little bit. Uh, things that we kind of originally always did um, before dollars were really cut for mental health. So more preventative care, uh, crisis care uh, that hopefully you know, we'll really see an impact in the communities over the next year uh, and really drive more services. So when you look at that budget, it's, it's weird because when we compare it to last year, you know, we jumped from um, a $12 million budget to a $16 million budget, most of that going right back into staff, and so we're able to pay staff more because we were able to account for that increased cost, um, which again will help with that retention. But if you look at the very bottom, it looks like we made um, 14 thousand dollars and uh, I'm, I'm sorry 1.5 million dollars but it's also a weird year because we have a capital campaign going um, in Emporia uh, one of those that Don was mentioned you know with the new building um, we've already uh, completed and moved into one of our other large buildings and then this one will be done um, in August or September to reduce from seven buildings to two there in Lyon County so uh, that campaign dollars threw that off a little bit, and then we had a lot of grants from the state in order to help us achieve the CCBHC. So those would not be typical incomes, and usually they're coming right back out on expense. So um, if we took those things out, then we actually had a little over $700,000 loss 
um, which is a more typical number. And our goal is always to be in that zero balance budget. Yeah. Want to add anything? Sorry. And um, how do you go ahead? How do you do or handle the net points loss? You got funds laying back someplace to cover that. We do try and build reserves um, for those ebbs and flows. So your balance um, sheet does show some reserves in it. Yes. Yeah. 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 And it, this is a cash basis. So that some of that's on paper, you know, when we have to write off, because we're going to serve anybody regardless of their ability to pay. Mm -hmm. And so we have a large write off um, every year for those individuals uh, who are mm -hmm. underinsured or uninsured. Um, so, but yes, we are trying to keep a reserve on hand um, to cover those ebbs and flows. Um, and then as we move more into the CCBHD model, it should smooth out because we won't have the state grants. There's um, not as many out there because we've already reached some of those um, programs that we needed to meet. So we'll be operating on just our base operating funds and, and uh, rebasing every couple of years with the state. So. And, and going back to that awareness of comparing CCBHC dollars to the fee for service the year before, next year's budget will be able to look at a little bit better because we know what to expect from that and what we you know, gain for this year. We, it's really hard to dictate how much uh, service and, and dollars you're going to get in because the, the reimbursement changed so much. And then when we did our PPS rate, we had to submit a cost report, and since we submitted that, we, answered, we put in our anticipated cost, what we thought we would spend with the increase in salaries um, and all the um, costs that it take to build the program, and we've already exceeded those costs by 30%. So when we rebase, you know, the PPS rate will hopefully reflect, but then again, we only get that payment from Title 19 Medicaid, um, so there's various types of Medicaid, so there's only one type, um, so it's, it's not a profit maker, it'll level out, but it does help us cover the cost a little bit better for those payments. So you went from seven buildings then and, and combined into two buildings? We will, yep. I mean, that's the plan. Yep. And then we'll, we'll talk, uh, actually, the next slide on page six, we'll talk a little bit about uh, Coffee County. Um, so if you look at the number, total amount of people served um, was about 310 here in Coffee County. It was slightly down from last year numbers total. Uh, and some of that has to do with staffing. And, and at one point we stopped doing um, intakes for everybody just because we were trying to keep up with the clientele that we had. Uh, all that said, in 2023, uh, we had a 27% increase in the total number of services we performed. So our total number of clients served was down in, in general. Um, but we increased services, so the amount of times we, we provided something to somebody by 27%. So um, we were doing a lot more things, uh, but for there, for various reasons throughout the different counties, we had less numbers. Some counties we had higher, um, but those counties that we struggled to have uh, enough providers and some of those things, we did see that increase. Um, so all that said, here in Neustron, uh, I think I've come in for a few years now saying we could really use a different building. Um, we've outgrown it. We were, we were renting it um, just over here a couple blocks off of Main Street. Um, there was a couple hopeful moments of opportunities that maybe we were going to expand in that building we're in. Um, it just never was able to come to fruition. And so uh, our staff got um, you know, pretty in our faces about it, like <coughs> something, especially when they're seeing what's going on in Emporia and our ability to expand there. And so we came up and and really looked at all the different options and, and variety of ways that we might be able to do that, which could have been a couple different buildings and, and some of that. But we ended up, we did purchase a building in New Strawn. Um, it's the old dentist office, and there's a little barber right, you know, shop right next to it, um, which is going to be great for us. And so um, we're really looking right now at just what our next steps are as far as a, a, a campaign of some sort to raise funds to cover the cost of I'm reconstructing that. And so uh, that's pretty exciting. It definitely is large enough. It's got a large uh, footprint upstairs and then it has a basement that will be able to do a lot of things, uh, including bringing in groups and having our summer groups and after school groups and adult groups in that space versus having to use uh, other community buildings, uh, which is really exciting. Just have to figure out uh, next steps for that. Our, our goal with those buildings is always to not have debt at the end of those. Um, the board's pretty adamant about um, we don't, you know, we want to be sustainable, we don't want debt because of that, and so we'll be doing a campaign. Um, but with that, too, we have lots of new things happening. 
So um, with the CCBHC, um, we've been doing the stepping up, um, which is that jail laid on position. I know we've had some staff come in and talk about that um, for a little while now, a little over a year probably, and we're able to get that search through grant dollars. Um, that individual is really working uh, with jail and law enforcement on um, Basically, they do an assessment when someone comes into jail, identifies they've got a mental health problem, then wrapping services around them, and then also helping on the discharge side, really trying to reduce the recidivism of somebody who uh, you know, releases from jail and comes back in. So there's a lot of things working against them when those things happen. So do they have their medications, do they have appointments set up, uh, do they have housing, all those sorts of things to help them be as successful as possible. Um, and then, so right now we did just hire in the last couple months a new therapist. So we have three therapists that are providing services here in Coffee County. Um, she was an intern for us for a couple years ago and decided to come back and, and join the team. Uh, she will be, they all provide services in Burlington, but then they're kind of spread out over the different <coughs> school districts and areas. And so she'll be also uh, providing services in Southern Lyme, in mm -hmm. Southern Coffee County. I can't read my own writing. Sorry. Um, and then we've got two case managers, so Allison Smith has actually been with us a few times, and she kind of goes away and thinks that she wants to try something else and always kind of keeps coming back. She says she's here for good now. Um, but she's a good addition uh, to have back on because she's also working with the, it's called an MHI team, IT team um, with the Burlington School District, so working with Brandon Planey and uh, Jody Grover, the principal there. Um, and that's a state grant that the state's really putting a lot of money into this mental health intervention team in schools. And so schools given money to hire a uh, base day mental health liaison, and then <coughs> some of the funding comes back to the community mental health center to place a provider there in the school. And so Allison's spending a lot of time there in the Coffee County School, in the Burlington School, um, working with Brandon. So the grants, are they yearly? Are they yearly? They are yearly. There's um, a bill right now that's being proposed in the legislation for that to become a set, a set amount in the budget. Okay. Um, <laughs> they just keep adding to it, but it is annual. And then they're also trying to pull it out of uh, the, the Kansas Department of Ed and move it into KDAD. Yeah, it'd, it'd be nice if it were. If because it is mental health. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So they're trying to do that. I don't know if that will be successful or not, um, but right now it is annual. But they've added to it since starting it probably three years ago every year um, and, and just keep expanding. And this is um, Burlington's first year of, of participating in that. And so the school initiates that, and, and um, I think it's going pretty well, but it definitely increases communication and referrals and helps make sure that they're connected to resources. And um, then we have a full-time attendant care worker here too, and so what she allows us to do besides kind of working one-on-one -on -one with individuals is um, she helps kind of take the vitals and manage a med clinic of sorts here on site. So somebody can come to our Burlington office and um, it's televideo to our prescribers, but she's able to do that nursing side um, so that that is more successful on, on that end. So lots of things. Um, one thing that's Starting here in the next couple of weeks is a, a new SUV program for so substance use uh, services, uh, something we've been lacking for many, many years. And um, it's a little bit more complicated to kind of, kind of get your licensing. So we are licensed as an agency to be a substance use provider, but you have to license every building that you provide services out of. And so we're kind of systematically trying to get everybody uh, caught up. And so once we can get our building in Coffee County licensed, we do have a person who can provide those services and so we'll see those get going um, and I'm, that could probably be as big as we want it to be but it'll probably start small with one person and uh, go from there. So uh, lots and lots of, of good things. Um, the other, other thing I would note is our mobile crisis team and so part of CCBHC requirement is that you have a 24-7 mobile crisis which means that we're going to you know, send a team out um, to do a couple things. One is really prevent the crisis from happening, but another is it could be law enforcement knows that they're going to a crisis that is mental health induced, for lack of a better word, and uh, respond with them and have some people on the ground to try to diffuse the situation and keep them from ending up in jail or at the local ER, because uh, that's what's happening now when there's a mental health crisis going on. Um, I think one of the best things about it is there's individuals in our communities that might call law enforcement 20 times a day or 10 times a week. Um, we know it's mental health, but there's not a 
there's not a need to do further um, services for them or uh, further steps, but that they can then let us know, hey, it'd be really nice if you could connect with this person and we could try to get them wrapped with services so that we can at least reduce the burden that's happening on, on our partners. So um, lots of things on that. Any questions on that? I have a couple. Yeah. <laughs> the substance abuse side, will that include assessments locally once it's up and running? Yep. Does it, but it doesn't right now. Not yet. Okay. So part of the CCBHC uh, requires a lot of assessments. Um, <clears throat> I'm assuming you're talking about Rate Act full assessment. So we'll be doing uh, an intake, which is somebody comes in and you're kind of asking what signs and symptoms are and what their needs are. And if there's an indication of substance use, then we're going to do some specific assessments on substance use to identify what those needs are. And then there's um, that referral on to a, a RADAC or what those services might need, which is usually how somebody kind of gets into inpatient or um, more level of care. But we will be having a full program, which is, um, you know, like nine hours of group therapy a week and uh, therapy every so often. And so it's a pretty extensive opportunity for individuals. And I know you've got some providers in, in town that do that, but there's always need for more. So, and choice is always a good thing, for sure. The, the mental health crisis side of things, as the county is trying to deal with that on a regular basis, and the telehealth or tele, whatever you want to call mm -hmm. it, where, who's it? Uh, HIS. HIS does that. Is there any way that that's going to move to an in person model? Because that's problematic. Uh, our hope is, and so hopefully we're seeing some of that. Our, we have a pretty robust emergency service team right now, clinicians, during the day. Um, and so trying to take back some of that, and then as we fully expand the mobile crisis unit, um, we're hopeful that we can, you know, take much, there, I think there'll be times, like we have three people that are needing um, screening at one time in an overnight session that our staff would go first and then we would rely back on HIS and so we're really hoping to turn that back over into uh, services that we provide um, which might still look televideo but it'd be one of our staff person on face to face with them and then connecting them to our clinician if that makes sense um, because yes sometimes it works great and sometimes it doesn't for sure it, it, it's not a as much a well it's a local issue. I think it's a state statewide oh, yeah. issue. Yeah. Um, but the the big issue is statewide and mental health at the state level yeah. is woefully underfunded. And when somebody here locally is in crisis and they get ordered to go to, for example, Osawatomie State Hospital for involuntary treatment, they're not there very long. Um, it, I mean, it's for lack of better wording, in my opinion catch and release program where they stabilize them and then they send them back out and I'm, I'm not sure that's the best model. For some that works, but for the majority they have significant mental health needs that need to be addressed one way or another and the, the telehealth, tele-interview, whatever that process is, I had a recent case where we could not get a screener, the, the actual screener in court in time to get uh, them to testify. So somebody came in 20 minutes before court, did a five minute evaluation, then gave me a, a report right before court, which is not the way it should work. And I was blindsided, just a, a, a very uh, bad taste in my mouth with, with that process. And I expressed my displeasure to the people, whoever it is that the emails come through, and it, it went up to whoever the people are, the attorneys and management within that agency, but it, <clears throat> it's a problem that needs to be. Yeah. So it might be worth um, talking with our crisis services and HISMU and, and working through that process. Every county uh, attorney has a little different way of dealing with it. Um, the previous Lyon County attorney that dealt with it is now working for HIS. I'm not sure if you knew that or not. 
So Mike Holleran uh, is now an attorney that is working with them and um, trying to kind of synchronize how individuals are doing it. Like so in Lyon County, um, HIS would do that screen, but then we would just always re send a representative from Crosswinds as a clinician that could review that report and be able to speak to it um, because of that reason. Uh, they work, you know, they might be on shift and work that night, but then they're off the next day or sleeping, and so that that does cause problems for sure. Um, and so there might be, we might just need to have a meeting and, and talk about that process and what can we make it so that you're not, well, you know, five minutes report's not very helpful. So um, not at all. We might can maybe see if there's different options on how to do that. I would appreciate um, that. So. Uh, but yeah, definitely in hearing from across the state that everyone's a little different, so it's hard to it's hard for the, those workers to understand and know what the different needs are and so I think that a little bit. As far as hospitalization in the state's response to that, um, they did break ground in Wichita to build another um, adult psychiatric uh, facility. They're also uh, really pushing hard on on communities to build their own um, either a crisis stabilization unit. Uh, or a um, crisis intervention center, which is basically an involuntary short-term placement, uh, which is a huge, huge list. And so we're actually looking at if one of those two options is appropriate for us. Um, some conversations in different communities, uh, there's some other pieces to the puzzle that would be more important, like restitution uh, and restoration for individuals who are deemed incompetent because we're having people stay in jail um, longer than their sentencing because they can't get to learn because it's the only place right now that does that. I was going to say, once they're assessed and, and, and placement is a big problem as far as where, where, do, you, where do you send them? Right. So is that correct? Yep, I mean, yep. So we do the evaluation and can say if they're competent or not, but if they're not, if they're not competent, Previously, they've always had to go to Warner, which is the only place, which you can imagine statewide is a problem. And so people were having to wait longer than that. So the state started pushing out some pilot projects last year to look at restoration and, and the community mental health centers providing that. And so um, they're just kind of coming out of some of those pilots and figuring out how we would do that in different communities um, and, and doing some training because pieces that we've never seen before as agencies. So um, that's something else that we're looking at and figuring out because I think they have to be in jail to receive that care, and so then you're talking pretty regular routine of, of, of treatment and what that could look like because it can match up with their uh, medication as well. The wait is at, at times 12 to 18 months because it's so backlogged, and <laughs> it's a problem because the criminal case is stayed and cannot move forward if there's a finding of incompetency. You can potentially restore somebody's competency with, with treatment, which happens at Lyman State Hospital. But it, it is a huge void in the, the criminal justice system right now. And what, what's going to happen in, on the attorney side, defense counsel is somewhere and maybe they've already done it, was going to sue the state and request the King's Supreme Court take action because it, it's not working the way it is. Right. So that's, and, and that tends to be what happens. The state kind of gets in trouble for something. <coughs> and, um, yeah. They figure out someone else to come in and try to resolve that. So that's what they're trying right now. Um, I've asked for some numbers on how, how many people that influencing in each of the counties and, um, and those sorts of things. And so... We are exploring that. We've got lots of people doing some training and we're trying to figure out what that process could look like. It's really not a news flash. The state's known that mental health has been rising for up to years, but it's a lot of times people just sit on their hands and don't know anything. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I'm talking about a lot of things. I think some of it too is just not under, still not understanding the impact and uh, how it hits. A lot of entities, you know, all of our partners are struggling with individuals that are experiencing mental health, and is that a crisis of mental health, or is that a day-to-day, -day, you know, mental health? Because <coughs> very few people can tell you that they've never had a mental health plan or symptom, and so uh, it's just as we reduce stigma, we're seeing it more, but then maybe not always understanding too the impact on 
on things and then we bottleneck stuff a lot, you know, like only having one entity to be able to do this restoration. Um, and so having to play catch up and, and then have people on board to, to spend the money in those places because we're all asking, you know, as you guys know, everyone's asking for money and you have to figure out where it should go and, and the best way to spend it. But um, yes, it's becoming, I, there's lots of good things happening, but it almost feels like it's becoming more and more complicated because you're trying to, you know, plug so many different holes and different things that it's impacting. So, mm -hmm. You know, homelessness is a big push with, with the state right now, too. Lots of dollars going to that, um, which a lot of those individuals are mental health, really you know, have some sort of mental health problems going on, but um, just new things keep cropping up, and homelessness, a lot of that is, you know, well, lots of different things there too. It costs more now to live than it ever did, and and got a lot of people in that gap of the Medicaid expansion or not, whether you believe it or not. It just individuals don't have insurance, and and you know they're choosing that or not choosing to not have homes and have to figure out how to live. And so uh, we got to deal with that. You know, communities don't want homeless individuals on the streets or in doorways and alleys, and so. It's just it's very common, unfortunately. So, but yeah, we just keep sending billions of dollars overseas to people who don't like it. Yeah. One so. of COVID played a role in part of this. Mm -hmm. <coughs> now there's a claim that social media plays another role. Oh yeah. Or do you do you believe that? Social yeah. media. I mean, COVID is just, is another stressor, right? And stress is a huge part of. How we deal with and things. When they did the shutdown um, and all like that. And then social support is a huge protective factor, and so when we didn't have that for so long, I guess definitely. Got attached or uh, addicted to social media. Well, I would I would say the biggest thing about social media, besides yes, we're on our we're on our equipment a lot, is um, it's a safe place for people to say and act however they want. And so there's always someone on receiving end of as those comments. It's a lot easier to. Um, do more hurtful things, not face to face with somebody. Um, My tactful way of saying that. <laughs> oh, no, that's right. That's right. Uh, and if, so if we people can be pretty cruel. Yeah. It's yeah. easy to say stuff if you're if you're not if, yeah. you're, if you're not facing. And then there is something to be said. If something's traumatic going on or something hurtful, that it's just in your face all the time. Oh, you know, one of the things we would tell you is turn the TV off so you don't watch the news 24/7. Well. We don't do that anymore. You know, we used to be able to go to bed at 10 o'clock and there wasn't anything else on except the late show. Um, but now it's just on repeat and social media is even more readily accessible than that. So, yep. I know the share of grants. Yeah. And the Frontier Farm Credit 3000. Is there any way to get more funds from them? You know, they probably do as much in the seven counties <coughs> as any business service as any business out there. And I hope I'm not stepping out of line on making a comment, but the Frontier Farm Credit's huge. Mm -hmm. It would be nice if they could we come not, forward with, a, with more money. Right. A lot of these, as it looks like a lot, is for the campaign. So we tried to identify which one those are with the asterisk, but um, some of them were like Frontier Farmers were writing to really look at um, helping support our day-to-day -day services and, and programming specific. And so I certainly can take that back to our our grant writer and ask, um, but I, I don't know that we've had much luck asking for more than that. And, you know, again, they might have a whole bunch of people asking for those things, sure and so do. even smaller increments. Um, <coughs> but we definitely have been very successful in in getting some some big dollars from different community partners and foundations, and and we haven't hit. We try not to hit um, Coffee County too hard, knowing that we had a campaign coming here next, and. Um, have some, some good leads on some of those. And then we used um, the Jones Foundation for a, a big ask in Emporia. When we had a conversation with their uh, director, we, um, he definitely was tasked us with, we want equality in how we spend dollars, which would be Coffee County and Osage County. Uh, and so we're very optimistic about uh, their response to that when we asked them. Um, Do you feel comfortable we're going to continue to support the expansion of the buildings? Is that, is that what I'm hearing? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they supported us um, with our Emporia campaign, our Lyme County campaign. Yeah. But when we had that conversation, made the comment, we'll do this, but we also want you um, 
um, to focus on these other two counties that we served. So, because um, we knew then that we were we needed to expand. Um, so. Because I think they'd be receptive to knowing that all these things keep costing more and more. Yes, yeah, they are. Yeah. And, they, and they've got they do huge <laughs> amounts of income. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm very thankful they're there. Yeah. You know, 100% okay. that any program like this that money can be spent on saves on all these other things with our yeah. judicial system and everything else. I would think it's it's hard to get that money in the spot where it exactly needs to be, but prevention's way cheaper than yes. and that's trying to punish the cure. <laughs> yeah. You know. Yeah. And that's our hope, like with the mobile crisis and the jail liaison, some of those things that before we just our budget was so thin, you know, we just couldn't openly offer services that weren't getting a feed for service back. And so in the, the foundations definitely are seeing that. And so if you know of uh, foundations or um, entities or individuals that we, you know need to talk to as far as our campaign going on here. We, I'd certainly take those suggestions as well, but okay. um, people are very, I mean, they definitely are seeing the needs. There wasn't anybody that we've talked to, and that was probably one of the most fulfilling things about the campaign, um, is talking with individuals who see that need and, and believe in that mission and, and want to help okay. support it, so, for sure. Um, well, good work. Thank you. As always, I would just close, if you're seeing gaps, if you're seeing needs, you can bring them forward. We're always very good about communicating some of those things. I'm not sure we're always as good at coming back and, and helping close those gaps, but I think we're in a better place now than we've ever been to do so. Um, and so definitely want to hear what they are so that we can try to resolve some of them or at least make some sort of impact in that gap because they do exist and it's hard and there's lots of systems at play, um, whether it's through mental health or uh, corrections or a school or you name it. You know, they all kind of cross over at some point and um, just trying to improve those communications and work together and figure out the best thing for the different communities. And every community is a little different. Even little towns in the different counties, as you guys know. So. <laughs> Sounds like Wayne and the uh, sheriff would see more of the gaps than yep. Yep. a normal individual would. So. Yep. And the school. For sure. Yes. Mm -hmm. Regular contact. Thank you for coming in. Thank you, ladies. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for the questions. Thank you folks for a good job. Thank you. Thank you. And our new event, our next event will be May third. Thank you. Uh, so uh, we'll have dinner and a quick presentation, and then we'll have a comedy show. So, the, the, the comedy show. Oh, comedy show. Um, so you should be starting to see those invites coming through, and we would welcome any and all of you. Um, You're the headliner. Oh, the headliner. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fine. So, That's all right. It was a good time last year. I think it'll it'll be a little less. Um, I'm gonna use the word crude. <laughs> um, comedy sometimes gets that way, but definitely you're trying to make sure that it's this time. But it was a good time last. Year. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Enjoy a good week. Have Thank a good you. week. May need a quick break or go yeah. on into Mr. Yeah. Ryan. We always got it. We always got it, Mom. We always got it, Mom. Have a good week. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Open bridge. Right there, Sheriff. Sure All right. Is everybody today? Yeah. Good. Don't want checks. <laughs> kind of a Monday. Yeah. All right. Well, I've got several motions today. I think I should have got sent up last week. But I'm um, we'll start. We didn't have any call outs um, this week, so that's always always a good thing. Um, first motion would be for the striping. Um, we received one bid. Back on that, which is pretty typical, um, we send it out to three or four people and we maybe get two bids back some years, but um, really the straight line, you know, they do majority of the striping is for Kansas, really. But, are they based um, out of Topeka? No, they're up in Nebraska. Nebraska? Yeah, but they they go clear down to Oklahoma and they've got a big a gear. Yeah. Yeah, so basically um, the bids come in just a little bit higher, so... 
um, 60 cents a gallon higher than last year. So, motion reads based upon the recommendation. Road Bridge Superintendent moved that the bid received March 6, 2024, by straight line striping in the amount of $25.37 for both edge striping and center line striping for the cost of material per gallon and application for striping project S2401 C to be paid from Road Bridge Fund. So moved. Second. Moved by you and a second by McCurry. Any discussion? <coughs> And I do see you got what 80, 89 and 90, 98 miles. Yeah, 89 miles for the center line, and then um, the, a bit of yellow, and then 98 miles for the white. So, any discussion? All in favor say aye. Uh, aye. Aye. Motion passes. <coughs> All right. Thank you. Next um, would be our liquid asphalt. So this is just our different oils for chipping, um, fog seal and patching. Um, typically we get three bids back on that, Vance Brothers, Coastal Energy and Ergon. Um, this year Coastal Energy was low, low bid. To my knowledge we haven't, we haven't used Coastal that I know of. Never heard of but, so they're out of, um, based out between Joplin and Springfield. But I know that there's a lot of counties starting, you know, they're working their way up this way, like Butler County, Lyon County, um, Allen County's dealt with them, and, you know, I've reached out. Nobody's had any issues with them. Um, as far as delivery, timing is always a hassle on our chip seals because we go through several tanks of oil a day. So if we're having to wait for a company to get it here, you know, we have some downtime, but everybody really talks highly of them. Um, so that's my recommendation for this year is to. Try them. Well, I, I noticed on, on the email that I got, I'm trying to read the return freight charges. One of them's 400 per truck arrived at site, yeah. I guess, and then the other one's 1,030. Yeah, and that's that's coastal there. That's for a short load. Any loads less than 5,500 gallons. Yeah, and so and that's very seldom was that do we have a short load because we you know, we take full loads. Yes, there's considered all of, all those bids are very very close together, yeah. and that you don't always see that. So it must be a pretty competitive. Yeah, yeah, competitive uh, pretty close. Yeah, I mean usually, usually um, Ergon and Vance Brothers are usually neck and neck on everything. But like I said, Coastal did. Um, I don't know. They've had had some guys retire and got a new rep in here, so maybe he's just backing off on his commission side of stuff. I don't. Maybe we'll get some business, I don't know, but it's... It benefits us, it's all about right. I guess. Uh, next motion, based on the recommendation, Road Bridge Superintendent moved to approve that the bid submitted by Coastal Energy as the best, as being the best bid for 2024 liquid asphalt as shown in the bid tabulation dated March 6, 2024, funds to be paid from Road and Bridge Fund. Uh, so moved. Oh, Moved by uh, Thompson, seconded by Meats. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, aye. Motion passes. All right, thank you. Uh, the next motion should be our cold mix. And so basically, this is just we don't award this. To, we got two bids on that. Um, we utilize both companies just kind of based on where our need is. Like if we're up towards Lebo, we might use APAC. APAC's a little bit higher on their stuff, but Travel costs figured in there, and then the availability of, of material sometimes too. So this is basically our prices for this year. Um, so this is, gives us permission to use both of them. So is it so is it so FOB the shop? I mean, yeah, that's what I'm trying to figure out. If you have it delivered to Lebo, is it going to be cheaper than what's on here? Well, no. So that'd be delivered to the shop. That's what the what's what the delivery price is. So APAC, I mean. We would go get it there. We'll pick it up. Yeah, we go pick it up, and we, even with Kilo, we go pick it up there. Um, <clears throat> the one thing with Kilo is we have to order an entire load and haul that, where we have the ability to, to just get a truck load over at APAC because they keep keep it on the ground, and we don't have to order an entire load. So sometimes 
you know, if we get to the end of our patching season, we don't need to order an entire load, but we, if we could just get a couple, you know, 30 times or a couple truck loads to get us by. Yeah. Um, Based on recommendations, the Road and Bridge Superintendent moved to approve the purchase cold mix patch for 2024. Funds to be paid from Road and Bridge Fund. Mm -hmm. I'll second. Moved by McCurry, second by night. Any more in any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, aye. Motion passes. <clears throat> All right, thank you. The next <coughs> couple of motions is dealing with our asphalt stuff. Um, <clears throat> starting the process to go out for bed on those. So I know I had some discussion here a while back on our 2024 projects. Um, a few changes here. Um, we've added added some asphalt. Um, first one here is up on Fauna from 22nd to 26th. We were looking at doing a one inch mill with a chip seal up there, but after looking at that a little more, and um, I've had some, some help looking at that, it was just with the amount of routing that's on that road, it's just we decided the best route it needed some asphalt. So we're looking at um, basically a one inch leveling course and then a one inch overlay on top of that. Um, it's going to work really well up there. Yeah, I'm afraid. I'm afraid if you don't put any asphalt on, I think you're going to lose it. Yeah, and that's you know that that road gets a lot of traffic, and especially from when the quarry was there on Fonda from the south. I mean, it got beat beat pretty hard. But so it held up really, really. No, hard it has, it years, has, and that's, that would be some of the concern if we if we don't go back with some asphalt now. We <coughs> definitely would see that repercussions of that a few years down the road. So, so the so your first coat you put on. You just you just fill your ruts. Essentially, it, it's, they call it a leveling core, so it just takes. I mean, it, I mean it helps you have like an inch in the high spots. And yes. Deeper in the. Yeah. The it, so it, so it might not even be an inch on some spots, and it, right. Yeah. Right. It might be an inch and a half in the wheel ruts. Uh, okay. They do that lay down machine. Yes. Yeah, lay down machine, and then they come back with a one inch overlay on top of that. Instead of going in and milling it on one level. Yeah, well, you can do that, or you know, you could go in with a two-inch overlay. But um, you know, when you're trying to get a good ride, you know, the one-inch leveling course is what's going to help with the end result. You know, especially when you're dealing with that much wheel routing and inconsistencies in the road, so it just addresses a lot of that problem. Yeah. You know, a guy can mill it, or he can do a one-inch um, leveling course. Really, price is pretty similar. So I see. I mean, why not get more asphalt instead of having to mill if you don't? Need to. Um, a lot of times you mill when you're restricted on your height. If you're getting getting too tall on your asphalt, you know, I know that's um, around guardrails or where you don't have shoulders on the roads. If you keep going up, eventually that's going to keep getting pretty right, steep. That's so, the issue. Yeah. based on the recommendation, the Road Bridge Superintendent moved to request solicit bids, <clears throat> solicit sealed bids for A two four O one C hot mix. Asphalt project, approximately four miles of two-inch hot mix overlay on Fauna Road from 22nd to 26th, Old Highway 50. Funds to be paid from General Fund Public Works Asphalt Line. So moved. Second. Moved by Hughes and second by Knight. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. All right. The next one is uh, the project going out east of town. Um, the only thing we've changed, we were going to do a um, one-inch mill and an inch and a half overlay. So we're going to do the same thing we're doing on Fauna. We're actually going to do a one-inch leveling course um, with a one-inch overlay on top of that. So it'll be total two-inch overlay and no milling. Based on recommendation, Road Bridge Superintendent moved to request solicit sealed bids. For A two four O two C hot mix asphalt project, approximately five and a half miles of two inch hot mix overlay on eleventh lane east of River Bridge to Planter Road and twelfth Quail Road to Reaper Road. Funds to be paid from General Fund Public Works Asphalt Line. I'll move. I'll second. Moved by Meats, seconded by McCurry. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. All right. Thank you. The next one 
is one that we've added in. Um, this would be for some asphalt down by the shop. Um, the city has actually got a project going on um, along 6th Street here and then up to Housatonic and then from Housatonic down past our shop there's a couple blocks there that is, is county maintained. Um, it's pretty worn. I mean showing a lot of, lot of stress and um, be a good time. You know I was actually going to do that next year and make that asphalt project but since the city's already tying into that I thought it'd be a good time to tie that in. So we have a couple blocks there that I would like to add in to this year. Based on recommendation, Road Bridge Superintendent move request solicit sealed bids for 24 A 2403C hot mix asphalt project, approximately half a mile of two inch hot mix overlay on 6th Street, on 6th, Housatonic to Kelly Street and 10th. PL, I guess. Place. Place. Yeah. Okay. Six to seventy-five highway. Funds to be paid from General Fund Public Works asphalt line. That's a move. <coughs> I'll second. Moved by uh, Thompson, seconded by Meats. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, aye. Motion passes. All right. Thank you. Um, the next next three motions I have are in regards to some updated job descriptions. Um, we had some discussion a few weeks ago about this. Um, executive sessions on on um, on these. So basically, we have a few jobs that were misclassified back when we um, had our new wage and job classification take place a few years ago. Something similar we addressed last year was our CDL truck drivers. Um, got that corrected. Um, got a few other positions here. So this is just um, dealing with the new updated job descriptions. And the first one is the Office Support Associate position to landfill. Um, the job description for this didn't accurately reflect what the responsibilities of that job is. Um, so I created a new job description, which is now the landfill clerk. Um, so that'll take a job that was in a pay grade 20 and reclassify it up to a pay grade 25. Based on the recommendations, Road Bridge Superintendent moved to approve the updated landfill clerk job description. No additional personnel are being added to the department with this action. I'll move. I, I think it probably needs to be. The, the motion needs to be maybe modified just a little bit because it's not updating, it's creating a new, to sort of approve the newly created job title of landfill clerk, pay category 25, and then everything else is fine. That's what I was going to ask if we didn't need to pay grades in there. So. Well, I'm going to have to do that with the next one, too. It, yes. Okay, I will reread the motion. So it's pay grade 25? Yes. Based on the recommendation of the Bridge Superintendent move to approve the newly created landfill clerk job description with pay grade 25. No additional personnel are being added, just added to the department with this action. We'll still move. Second. I'll second. Uh, moved by McCurry, seconded by Meats. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Uh, aye. Motion passes. All right, thank you. Uh, the next one is the purchasing and fuel specialist. Um, so it wasn't a pay rate 30 to be reclassified to pay rate okay. 35. So I've updated the job description. And really one big addition to that is um, everything that's involved with the underground tank storage um, reporting to the state and everything that goes along with that was a big <coughs> big change to that job description. Based on recommendation, Road Bridge Superintendent moved to approve new graded purchasing and fuel specialist job description with pay grade twenty five or thirty five, no additional personnel are being added to the department of this action. That's a move. I'll second. 
Moved by uh, Thompson, seconded by Knight. Any discussion? Are they report? What, what are they actually reporting to the state? Um, so there's all the testing that we have to do. There, you have quarterly testing that takes place on those tanks and inspection. Um, you know, so that's, I mean, you have your quarterly reports and there's also a yearly report that's filled out. Um, and spills happen. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's, and then the spill mm -hmm. side of it that we have to document and keep track of. But. It may be where a few stations have to do the same thing. When I was at Delaware, we didn't have to do any of that type of reporting. Yeah. Things of times have changed. <coughs> yeah. Well, that's back when they didn't care. People just <laughs> love when they knew. <laughs> any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion passes. <clears throat> uh, thank you. Um, <coughs> the next one here um, is the equipment operator position at the landfill. Um, you know, that job, it definitely has more responsibilities, and we've talked about this, um, than just a normal equipment operator. Just, um, you know, it's more in line with like what a crew leader or a layman's position would be. So, the new job description out there is for a landfill lead operator. Um, so we'll be doing away with the equipment operator that was out there and it's now a landfill lead operator. And that's going from a pay grade 35 to a pay grade 40. Based upon the, rec based upon the recommendation, Road Bridge Superintendent moved to approve the newly created landfill lead operator job description with pay grade 40 and personnel position change, is that still right? Pay grade 40 and personnel position change, is that right? Okay. okay. We're no. going from the old job, to the, I mean, new, old job description to new job description. Yeah. I don't know whether it's in there or not. Okay. I can delete it out. I think it'd be fine either way. Uh, no additional personnel are being added to the department with this action. Hold on. Second. Moved by Knight, seconded by you. Any discussion? <coughs> All in favor say aye. 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 Motion. And last but not least. Thank you. Well, I've got one. Then on the executive sessions that day, we have four employees. So the fourth one, um, and this is just discussion with the CP5 changes we got coming up. Um, so we had employee Russell Drake, sired on as equipment operator, at a pay grade 35, step one. You know, kind of how we bring in, bring in our new hires, if they have a CDL or equipment experience, they come in at a step two. If they have both CDL and equipment experience, we'll bring them in at step three. You know, he's got he's got his CDL, all his endorsements, and he's an experienced equipment operator. Um, I brought him in at step one. That was wrong. I, I should have should have brought him in at a step three at that time when we hired on. So I, I need to correct my mistake there. Um, so on the CP5. It'll show him moving to a to a step four, which is basically if I want to start him off at the O3 where I should have. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've looked through your CP4 or C look through that. Yeah, that thing. See that thing, CP5, but uh, everything looked to be in line with what we've discussed. Yeah, and that and that was the stuff that we talked about that day. So I just I know I needed to need to address that. Guess out here, so yeah. a lot to keep track of. <laughs> right. <coughs> um, the next would be so just with the job description changes, um, updating our table of organization. So I've got a motion to do that, and I just need Jesse to sign the sheets there. Oh, I'm I'm awesome. And just reflecting the changes. That just reflecting done. the changes that we just did, yes. Uh, move to approve Highway Department's uh, revision, revised table of organization dated 3 18 24. Okay. 
second. Moved by Knight, seconded by Hugin. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, motion passed. Thank you. That. I say we would authorize that chain sign. Or does that matter? Is that not what you said? I yeah. said move to approve Highway Department's revised table of organization. I think it's the Good enough. Same thing. For, for this. That's what I have for motions for today. So. Anything else? That's enough for no, that's enough for one day. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. Question, question for you about the uh, Meadows property. Do we have anything from them so we can put together? I just need property restrictions. Yeah, so they should. They're they're doing the final, getting the finals there. So I've been out there. Um, I know stuff's been shot. So basically, they're just getting the legals, um, the legal descriptions wrote up now. Okay. And so I know he was down last Friday. I, I'd say the next couple of weeks that should be taken care of. So that's that's the hang up for the resolution because I need the property description for the legal description to move forward there. So just still looking still looking the last part of May probably. Before before the end of the before the it's done and over with. Oh man, that may be true. And then there was reference to prior executive sessions and just I was thinking in my head about whether to, to say this or not, but I think it should. So as Ryan indicated, there were four prior executive sessions dealing with, uh, it, it was either job performance or evaluations. And although one of the byproducts of that, those conversations is these updated um, job descriptions or newly created, that was the, the, those were the specific topics that were discussed during right. those executive sessions. And I just want that, that to be out there in case somebody wants to make an issue of it. There's a, a statement made that has that clarification. It's reasoning behind everything, right? But I know if someone wants to make it an issue, people watch and go back and it's having that statement there uh, will will aid somebody if it's needed. That's right. That's our goal. Get the information, not trying to hide anything. No, that's right. I was yeah. working on the upcoming CP five and I just wanted to make sure what what I was looking towards was Yeah. Was good, so well, anybody else got anything for Rod? I uh, appreciate it. Have a good day. Take care. Rod. Gravel roads are looking better. You're right. What's yeah. that? Gravel roads are looking better. They are. They're getting there. Yeah, they're getting there. They're getting there. Yeah. 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 Got a bunch of chuck holes and stuff cut out in a lot of places and yeah. degraded. Definitely improved. A lot of rock home. Yeah. And then a lot of gravel. <laughs> so, yeah. I did notice, so I just thought I'd let you know. Yeah, appreciate it. <laughs> I appreciate it. So. Thanks, Ron. All right, have a good week. Take care. Good morning. Good morning. The uh, salary chart will now need to be updated because it has those changes on it. Has those changes. Yeah. I need a break. Yes, mm -hmm. please. Take ten minute break. We'll come back at uh, ten thirty five. <clears throat> Yeah, I'll just update it. Oh, okay.
because the salary curve. Right. Um, next on the agenda, I am going to request a 20 minute executive session. Myself, the board, uh, Todd Bemis, and Terry Seaton. This is to discuss personnel matters of non elected personnel specific to individual and individuals. <clears throat> County benefits and employment status. I will move. I'll second. Moved by Knight, seconded by McCurry. <clears throat> Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. We will enter at 1039. 1039. Or 2039. All in favor say aye. Flip back. Flip back back on. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. We'll enter 1039. Yeah, I went down. Okay. Good job. Sorry about that. That's all right. Two of us left. One more left. Bob, one more is left. Tom's still out there. <laughs> Sorry about that, Tom. You know what? He's just getting his job done. <laughs> All right. We're back. No action taken based on that executive session. Um, I need to request a 10 minute executive session. Myself, the board, this one's under, um, I believe it's B2, which is attorney client. And it deals with Legal matters dealing with the um, Mary Bell's economic development. Mm -hmm. Yourself and the board? Correct. In the executive session? I'll move. I'll say. Moved by Knight, second by Hugin. Any discussion? Ten minutes is plenty. Yes. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 We will enter at 11.05 for 10 minutes. <clears throat> Table, I guess. Was that that was your round table, I guess, huh? Sort of the start of it? Yep. Uh, the other one dealt with Ryan and
figure out if we have the legal description. So I know that's a, a pending agenda item. Once I'm provided the legal description, then I'll plug it into the resolution. I'll provide the, the put together the bones of a legal uh, notice to go to the paper so that people can come in. And I guess we'll need to get with uh, Cameron Roth about the auction side of things because it sounds like right now that's the consensus of how the, the board wants to move forward. Well, yeah, I mean, <clears throat> my, my thing is as long as we could have, longer we could have it out there, the better, but we got to have a legal description before we can advertise anything, so yeah. we're kind of, my thinking behind that kind of got shot in the foot, you know, so yeah. we got to have a legal description before we can get the ball rolling on this side as well. Because I think we could even have it, would we have to have it pub published in the paper and the resolution done before we can even market it on Cameron's side? Probably. And I think you need to have a vote to have under the resolution. That's the way you want to move forward. Okay. Okay. After so. <laughs> no, I didn't notice it. I just thought it was, I thought it was mine. Okay. Uh, it's trash. It's, 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 Steve, you have any round table for today? Well, I have one oh, more. Sorry. No, nope, you're fine. What I, what I want to do is hand this to the chairman and everybody can see it. If they check for restitution due and owing to the county related to a criminal matter where um, somebody had criminal action taken against them through the Coffee County District Court through a uh, negotiated settlement agreement uh, and a conviction, the restitution was made a part of that. I think it's approximately $3,800, so Coffee County was the victim, and that check needs to be signed, and then I think where, into what account this board wants that money to go is, I guess, the, the question I have. Um, what, so is there a certain department attached to this, is what the restitution's for? I mean, is it, I mean, they run into a road bridge vehicle, or what? No, this is, uh, I mean, it don't really matter what they did, but I mean, it was sort of a department that was here for the suffered because of it, you might say. I think multiple departments were impacted and affected by that particular. So you might want to put it back into the <coughs> general fund. General fund. Yeah, and uh, it's uh, I'm not. It involves an individual because we're in a live and open session. Although it is public, if somebody wants to get a hold of it, I'm not going to say their name. But it is a criminal case. The criminal case number. Once it comes around, I'll say the case number if somebody wants to look into it and get that information. But it's probably already embarrassing and uncalled. And um, it does tie to somebody who was formerly an employee of the county. So I, that's all I'll say. I'm not. I don't think it. It doesn't any good to air somebody's laundry. They've already been held accountable and it's been taken care of. So the case number in Coffee County District Court is 2023-CR-84. Anybody anyway, wants to look that up, it's open record. And they're making the restitution. So, you know. That was part of the <clears throat> part of the agreement uh, in handling it. And I can tell you because the next logical step would be, wait a minute, how, how is he talking about this? Meaning me, he, if the county is the victim and I'm the county attorney, I didn't handle the case. I sent it out for prosecution um, through another county attorney if they handled it. And um, so this individual's due process rights were protected. It was handled uh, in a way where it, it was 
is fairly and justly handled across the board. So those fees cover the, the other legal fees? I'm sure that was paid out of the general fund, wasn't it? No, that ends up being paid out of my county attorney. I, I don't know if that those legal fees come across your desk yet for the outside prosecution. Okay, well I would put I would put the I'd put the money wherever the outside prosecution money comes out of what I'm thinking. Yeah. Actually, that makes more sense. And we do an outside uh, prosecution this morning. Uh, I don't know. I I I don't think I don't oh, think those was, those was uh, that was jail stuff. I, I don't think oh, that okay. was okay. Oh no, you you're talking about uh something okay. you know, something okay. different. Okay, okay. <clears throat> well, I mean, if the outside prosecution comes through your account, then I would put that money back in your account well, to help. Well, let's put it, my, my recommendation would be to put it in the general fund okay. when that comes through, and I'll, I'll make a note on it. Pay it out of the general fund. Yep. Okay. okay. I'll give this to you so you can do what you see. Peter and Paul. Peter and Paul. <laughs> <laughs> Outside of that, that's what I have to do. <coughs> Steve, do you have any round table? No, sir. I'm good. <coughs> Don? I'm good. Uh, yes, sir. <coughs> Wade? Uh, the only thing I've got. Uh, was at the New Strong City Council this last week, and they are getting their stuff organized to uh, rip wrap their uh, four lagoons, their four cells, and uh, they have $100,000 that they have set aside in their in their monies to do that. And in February of last year, we said that we would. Grant them up to 150,000. They're not expecting that it's going to take near all of that. Is their expectation? But at this point, they're having trouble determining exactly what that figure will be because they want to get a certain layer of rock, you know, to do the job that it needs to do. And uh, I just wanted to <coughs> just mention that again. They just asked me to mention it, you know, before they move forward and. Uh, Without our help, they'd be <coughs> doing no work on the streets or anything this year. I mean, they've got to do this project, but they're but that just wipe out. Great, but drains them, drains them out. Yeah, yeah. So just wanted to bring that up. So what's our time? <coughs> what's our time frame? Why do they? You know, I don't know. I mean, they're they're doing it this summer is the plan, but I I cannot tell you. You know, when they're estimated, it'll be completed. Don't I? I know there was. Taking a look at it, but the possibility of doing one one of the three lagoons and spread it out over three years, but that's not done deal yet either. Yeah, I think they've got they've got some. If I recall correctly, some are pretty low now. Then they're gonna, you know, they get one done, they may have to pump some water over into another one or whatever to mm -hmm. to make it happen. So that's all I've got. Tom, I got nothing. You got nothing. Thank you. Kind of quieting down. Park lot's done. Lighting's good. Jail's gone. Yeah, they're making good work here. So yeah, good weather sure. overall. Anything from the clerk's office? Um, Angie said that they're making lots of progress on Time Clock Plus, and that will be addressed at the department head meeting on Tuesday. And then um, just a reminder that tomorrow is the election day. Um, and then the canvas of the election is March 25th at 10. March, April 25th. March. 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 Next Monday. Next Monday. Oh. By the way, it is a 20. Okay. Yep. Well, well. Other than that? Oh, no, they don't No, they're canvassing. Yeah, they're canvassing. Oh, the canvassing. canvassing. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. So, yeah, so the election's the thing tomorrow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is presidential preference, or is there something yeah. else on there? No, it's just the presidential preference for me. Everybody get out and vote. That's my word of wisdom.
like to send the condolences to the um, Tim Cardy family and, and uh, Mike Bartlett family. Lost two good people over the last week. Uh, too, too soon. So, I don't have anything else. Unless somebody has any last minute. We will adjourn at 11.29. Have a good day. Please. You wouldn't do any of staying on the seat, please. Or just do it all next month? Uh, we lack quite a few. Yeah. We lack so quite a few. Yeah. I, I have no problem. Yeah. It'll make a full day that day, but that's, that's part of it. So. Okay. Next Monday. Right. So we're hoping we'll get some more in. Yeah. So they have to be because it's the devil's Well, I guess by the end of April. Sorry, I don't know.